And Anodot is a company that delivers real-time business insight through anomaly detection. And today I will talk about anomaly detection. Why do we need it? What is it, anomaly detection? How do we gain real-time business insight using anomaly detection? And what are the steps that you need to do in order to implement such a system? But before all of that, um, let's understand what is the problem. Why, why do we even need real-time uh, business insight? And what are the problems that can be caused if we don't have that? Now, only on that subject, I can speak uh, for the next 30 minutes, uh, defining uh, different problems of companies that uh, happens when they didn't have real-time business insight. But uh, instead of that, I also created a video. So uh, let's see a short video showing a few examples of such uh, scenarios. United Airlines says it will honor the tickets it accidentally gave away for free. The decision is good news for people who snapped up the tickets after United accidentally listed airfares at zero dollars. This is a driver's dream. Gas for a buck a gallon. It happened yesterday near Houston. A Conoco station in Pasadena, Texas was selling regular grade for 101. Bit of a problem because the price was the result of a computer glitch. In Best Buy, just posted a $200 gift card for $15. So I was like, okay, you know, like, let me take a look into this. Okay, so I hope that you like this uh, dramatic uh, video. Uh, I call it a disaster, disaster video, and what happens when you don't have real-time business inside. Um, that, now, this was an example of price glitch. Uh, I can tell you that usually when I go to shop, I have uh, the opposite price glitch. I buy it in the higher price. So, uh, but uh, the, the price glitch and the problem that we saw, this is just one example of what happens when you don't have real-time business inside. And we see it in every industry. Uh, we see it in the digital advertisement uh, industry where you have companies trying to measure impression, clicks. You have a lot of frauds in that area. You have a lot of uh, technical problems that actually uh, cause loss of millions of dollars. Uh, we can look on different examples. Just uh, uh, two days ago, there was a problem in uh, Target that uh, the company uh, that, uh, that uh, was uh, disabling people from completing their purchase uh, on Cyber Monday. Uh, New York Stock Exchange was hard trading for nearly four hours. And uh, we can see other examples like we saw in the video that while you were sleeping, Best Buy was selling $200 gift card for $15. And this happened all over. When I searched uh, examples for the, so the presentation, it was amazing to see how many problems happen every day of uh, out of a uh, computer glitch. Now, we don't have anyone here from Best Buy, right? Okay, because I'm going to speak quite a lot on Best Buy, so <laughs> uh, good that I didn't chose Walmart. Uh, <laughs> but the guy from Walmart already left. Okay, so you might say that, uh, getting back to the serious mode, you might say that I already have business insight. I have real-time business insight. Every company, and I'm sure that I will ask every one of you, every one of you have FBI tools in place, have reports, have dashboard, have monitoring product. Uh, you define uh, uh, that every day, and you get reports every day. Now, 
by the title of the presentation, Disrupting the Static Nature of BI, you might imagine that we believe that this doesn't give you the complete solution and the real-time insight that you need. And let's see why. Millions of metrics. So uh, in today's world, you have uh, millions of metrics that you need to track. Uh, and I mentioned before that the, the digital advertisement. So if you look on the digital advertisement, you want to track impression, clicks, you want to be able to track that across a lot of dimension like campaign, uh, publisher, advertiser. If you look on other industries uh, like e-commerce or IoT, you will have millions of time series metrics that you want to track. Now, tracking that using traditional BI tools will not scale. And then what happens is that companies a lot of time will select the metrics that they want to choose to, to track and believe that they are important. But then who said that they did the right selection? Uh, who said that uh, they don't miss a lot of important insight uh, on the metrics that they do not uh, track? Now, this is the first problem that we see with traditional BI tools. The second one, maintenance and an automated process. So for the metrics that you do se select to track, you need to create reports, you need to create dashboard, you need to create monitoring tools, you need to create uh, uh, alerts. And all of this is really maintain, a lot, include a lot of maintenance and non-automated work. And uh, I'm speaking with a lot of companies that has uh, reporting teams in place of dozens of people that all they do all the day is just create reports on demand. False positive. So you want to create alert, you want to be able to be notified when something happened in your system. And in this process of creating alert, you will have a lot of false positive. You will have a lot of alerts that will wake someone in the middle of the night when nothing really happened or nothing important happened. And this problem of false positive alert really reduced the credibility of the system that you're using. And no real time. So at the end of the day, you do all of that and you end up with a system that uh, will give you reports every hour or every day, but it will not give you the actual real time that you need. Now, um, so we see four, we saw four problems that you have uh, when you are using BI systems, and the worst thing is that you will end up like this guy, looking on a lot of uh, traditional BI tools, looking on a lot of screens, and trying to understand what is going on. Now, I spoke a bit about why, why, we, why we don't believe that BI tools will give you the real-time insight that you need. So how do we get that real-time business insight? And uh, um, the answer is by using automated anomaly detection system that will disrupt the static nature of BI, that will aggregate, detect, group, and alert all the information that you need and will uh, deliver it to you in real time. Now, Let's get back to Best Buy. I, I has told you that I will speak a bit about Best Buy. So Best Buy, uh, while you were sleeping, Best Buy was selling $200 gift card for $15. And uh, Best Buy did discover the problem after a few hours. It took a few hours to discover the problem. And during this uh, few hours, uh, thousands of people already bought this uh, gift card. I heard in some place even that, uh, that it was uh, 300,000. I'm not sure that the number is correct. But anyway, in any case, it's a lot of people having such a, an error, such a mistake for a such long period is something that you want to discover much earlier and want to, want to know about in real time. Now, I will use Best Buy example, and this is an example, and we can apply it, of course, to any industry or to any e-commerce company, Artec, uh, IoT, anything uh, that you might think of. Uh, but I will use this example in order to explain how Best Buy could have avoided this situation using an anomaly detection system. Now, what is anomaly detection? So discovering the rotten fish in uh, your matrix or in your aquarium. So basically, in very high level, anomaly detection is the methods uh, where you want to analyze the normal behavior of all your data, of your system, and uh, to analyze this across time, and to understand when something is, is uh, uh, deviated from the normal and alert on that in real time. So this is a anomaly detection in very high level. Now, there are five steps in order to implement a, an anomaly detection system. And we, we're talking about metric collection, normal behavior learning, 
abnormal behavior learning, topology behavior learning, and real-time alert. And we'll go over each of these steps, and we'll explain what does it mean, plus uh, how, in best by example, uh, we could have uh, used that system in order to evade the, the situation. Now, uh, I, I had the test before. Uh, I saw uh, this guy, sorry, uh, sorry about that, uh, playing a game in his phone. And uh, <laughs> I was telling him that later on I will ask him if uh, he needed to activate the game. So we are still in the no game zone, right? We are good? OK. <laughs> um, so let's start with metric collection. So basically, we talked about the fact that companies has millions of metrics that they need to track. So uh, this any anomaly detection system that you have must be able to scale to a million of, of uh, metrics and must uh, be able to be universal and, uh, and uh, analyze any type of data that you have. Either it is business data, IT data, whatever source of data that you have, you will want to analyze in the system in order to uh, give you the right correlation and the right insight. Now, if we look on a Best Buy example, uh, remember, there was a problem of a, a gift card, $200 gift card that were sold for $15. Uh, so uh, we, will want to, we will want to actually track two metrics. One is number of purchases, and the second is the revenue. And you want to track these metrics across the dimension of product, store, geography, and device. Now, think about that. Only these two metrics the permutation across the dimension that I mentioned here for Best Buy, for all the product that they have in the website, will result probably um, tens of thousands of metrics and even more. Because for each product, and they have um, hundreds of products in their website, they now want to measure it across store, across different geography, across device. So no chance that Best Buy had some system in place to analyze specifically the revenue and the number of purchases for a gift card of value $200. So, so this is part of why we don't have that insight in real time. And probably they track it in some high level, um, analyzing the overall number of purchases or the overall uh, revenue. But then the impact of the change of uh, revenue in a number of, uh, number of purchases of a $200 gift card out of the entire product being sold in a Best Buy environment will not be such a meaningful. So this is step number one. Now, step number two is the most important one, the normal behavior learning. What does it mean? It means that for every metric that I have in my system out of these millions of metrics, I want to understand what is the normal behavior. Now, what we see if we'll go on the, uh, now we can activate this, uh, what we see that uh, we have two metrics again, number of purchases and hourly revenue. And we see that this is the actual behavior, this uh, dark blue line, this is the actual behavior of the number of purchases of $200 gift card uh, in Best Buy. Now, again, you will have millions of that, such metrics that you will want to learn the normal behavior. Now, this, uh, sh this shaded uh, blue area, I hope that you can see it on the monitor, uh, but you, there is some uh, area around the, uh, the line that represents the, the normal behavior that the system le learned. This is the range that we expect the metric of number of purchases to uh, be in. This is the range that we, wanted to, that we expect it to be. Now, when we learn, this is the outcome, what we see here. This is the outcome of an anomaly detection system. Now, we will want to take into account two factors when we do that uh, learning behavior. We will want to take into account seasonality and different signal types, the fact that uh, uh, signals will not be the same. Now, what is seasonality? Seasonality is the fact that uh, a metric will not behave the same in the morning, in the evening, in uh, different days of the week, in holidays. Like if you look on number of purchases in prod of products in Best Buy uh, a website, it will re be really different on the weekend or in the weekdays, uh, in different times of the week, or just now we had Cyber Monday, so they probably had some peak in the uh, uh, behavior of uh, purchases. Now, Every anomaly system that you will use must be able to deal with that seasonality and be able to actually build that a, a normal behavior in a good way, in an accurate way. Now, the second thing is the fact that uh, you will have different signal types. 
what, what, do, what does it mean? Not all metrics are created equals. So we can look on uh, these two examples, and they say that the behavior of metrics will be different. Some metrics will behave in a smooth way, which means that, that the behavior will be very, very seasonal, like we said, we said before. Some metrics will be irregular. What is irregular sampling? Irregular sampling is talking about the fact that you can have very different uh, behavior of the metrics. It can report now every one minute, suddenly it will report every five minutes, suddenly it will not report at all, uh, and suddenly the behavior will be completely different. Now, these are only two examples. We have also other examples here, but what I want to say is that every anomaly system that you will use will need to be able to do these two things. One, classify signals to category, meaning that whenever metric arrive, number of purchases, uh, clicks of uh, advertisement, or whatever it is, you will need to be able to classify it which category out of these six categories it is, and then assign it with baseline distributing and correct algorithm in order to learn the normal behavior in an accurate way. Because otherwise, if you will just use one algorithm, uh, you will maybe be correct in some of the examples, uh, some of the metrics, but will be way off on the other uh, metric behavior. So I hope this is, this is clear. Now, um, this is a very interesting uh, example. We analyze in Anodot uh, the, our platform and uh, try to get some insights about the distribution of uh, metrics across 20 million metrics that we manage today in our platform across dozens of companies. And what we see here that uh, out of the uh, signal types that I mentioned before, we have 38% uh, that are behaving uh, in a smooth way, uh, in irregular sampling, uh, 37, and then the rest distribute across the other uh, metric type. Now, what we learn from that uh, uh, pie is the fact that uh, today a lot of anomaly detection system in the market um, know to deal very well with uh, smooth, but will, they will not deal uh, well with other type of metrics. So any system that you will take, you will want it to be able to analyze all the different metrics and to cover and to get 100% uh, uh, accuracy of the behavior of your metric. Now if you even break it to two industries that we have today um, in our uh, platform, for the e-commerce and the attack, it's interesting to see that in the attack we will have much more smooth behavior, much more seasonal behavior than e-commerce. And the explanation to that might be that in the attack you have a lot of uh, seasonal behavior in terms of uh, um, very automatic behavior of the campaigns, how they are running, and the clicks, and a lot of uh, automatic system. While in e-commerce, it's much more irregular behavior because it's based on user behavior. People enter in the website, they don't enter the website, what they do in the website, and things in that matter. <coughs> so this is something that was interesting for us to discover when we analyze the data in our system. Now, um, getting back to Best Buy example, now this is a, actually, we learned the normal behavior. And why did we do that? We did that because when something abnormal happens, we want to be able to understand it right away. Now, what we see here, that they, uh, no, there was some deviation in some point of the number of purchases. There was a peak in the number of purchases of $200 gift card. And static threshold alert will find a problem only after, uh, only five hours after the anomaly based alert. And why is that? Uh, this is because of the seasonality, because metric is really seasonal. And you cannot really set a static threshold saying, I want to be alert on if something passed this threshold. Um, you cannot really set it per each of the time frame that you have. You will not set now hundreds of static thresholds for different days, for different hours, for holidays, and so on. And usually, what companies will do, they will compromise. They will choose one size fit all. Like we see on that line, they will set it on the, around the, the, the 1,000 purchases. While anomaly based alert will be based on the normal behavior learning, which will be much more close, uh, much more close to the actual behavior. So we will be able to get an, an alert right when something uh, abnormal happens. So this will give Best Buy the opportunity to get an alert after one hour or after 30 minutes, depends when, it, when we, we will look on the uh, graph here, and to be able to react much faster. 
So this is, <coughs> this is very important uh, part of uh, anomaly detection system to learn that behavior and to be able to alert in real time. Now, this is not all because um, we also have the abnormal behavior learning. And what do we mean when we are saying abnormal behavior learning? In an anomaly detection system, you will have an, a lot of anomalies. Now, not, of, not all of anomalies are the same. You will have some anomalies that are more important. You will have some anomalies that are less important. And you will want to have a system in place that will score them. That will give them a score, let's say, between 0 to 100, based on parameters like uh, what was the length of the anomaly, uh, how much time did it took, or what was the deviation from the normal, what was the actual deviation. Did it deviate in 10% or in 50%? So this is something that also very important, and we see here that uh, uh, this anomaly got a score of 72 versus the other that got a lower score. So this will really allow you to do the right prioritization of problems with the uh, scoring. Now, um, this, the fourth step, behavioral topology learning, and this is really an interesting part because uh, we, we saw that there was a peak in the number of purchases of a $200 gift card. Now, when I look at that, I'm saying, okay, something positive happened. Uh, great, people are entering the website. Uh, a lot of people are interested now in $200 gift card, and um, we are good. Now, if we look on it in the right context, uh, with a correlated alert, we see that at the same time, uh, we also had a problem with the hourly revenue expected from $200 gift card. So now we understand something happened here because it cannot be that on one end we have a peak of number of purchases and on the other end we have a, 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 that a problem with the revenue from $200 gift card. So, so the fact that we got an event that include all the correlated metrics that were alerting at the same time and where we, the system decided that they are correlated will give you the ability to analyze problem in context. And this is true for every, every problem that you have, okay? We hear a lot about the alert storm. I'm sure that you are familiar with the, with the notion, so with the term. So something happened, database is uh, falling, now we'll get a lot of alerts. If you'll start to get a lot of alerts, it will be really hard for you to understand what's going on, versus if the system will learn the behavior of the metric and automatically will correlate uh, metrics that are uh, related to each other, and we'll send you one focused alert, you will be able to uh, identify much easier what is the source of the problem and to react much faster. Okay, and, and this is also, we talked about uh, uh, something, uh, we talked about uh, three t steps, normal behavior learning, then the scoring, then uh, uh, the fact that we want to have a grouped anomalies or grouped alert. And this is also taken from uh, our uh, platform of Anadot and uh, over uh, the past week, okay, it's not, it's not the past week, it's in a specific week for 20 million metrics. And we see that in a given week, we have 76, uh, around 76,000 metrics that were in an anomaly. Now, imagine that now we needed to, we would have sent that for all of our customers, for dozens of customers. Uh, it's a lot of data to deal with, a lot of alerts. And then, if we go uh, on the right end, and we see that uh, out of this, only 2,000, around 2,000 metrics were in an anomaly with high score. Meaning that right away we reduce the number of alerts and anomalies that uh, the user need to look at. And then if we go even further, we see that we only send 400, around 400 uh, anomalies, or around 400 alerts in that, uh, that week. So we got from a number of 76,000 uh, metrics that the user initially needed to deal with to 426, which make it much more easy to use and to analyze and reduce a lot of noise in the system. So this shows like how you can get from uh, this unfocused situation to a very focused situation where you get something and you know what to do. And then the last step is actually kind of a summary of the previous steps. Uh, or maybe because this uh, format of slide is uh, always give you only five steps, so I needed to find the five step. But uh, it's uh, talking about real-time alert, okay? So receive in real-time correlated alert enable quick resolution. And uh, again, um, you, instead of getting very unfocused alert, a lot of alerts, you get one alert that include the behavior 
the normal behavior of the metric that were uh, alerted, the abnormal behavior, this uh, orange uh, line that we see here, and co the correlation of all the metrics that alerted, to, that alerted as part of that anomaly. So in uh, this anomaly, talking about an uh, anomaly in gift card related metrics, so now that when the operator gets that uh, alert, he knows that something happened and he needs to react very fast. And now, uh, after that, Best Buy are happy. They were able to solve the problem after uh, 30 minutes versus several hours. Uh, but not everyone are happy because this guy actually missed an opportunity to buy a, a discounted uh, card for uh, $15. So basically, uh, what we saw, and I will go to the summary, uh, I hope that I was able to explain using that example what is anomaly detection, how you can get real-time business insight, and why, is, why it is important. And again, this is an example of a specific company, a specific error of price glitch, but we see it everywhere, um, like getting back to uh, uh, Anodot. So again, Anodot is a startup that is doing real-time business insights through anomaly detection. We have today dozens of customers from uh, different industries like uh, IoT, um, uh, the digital advertisement, e-commerce, and so on. And it's really interesting because we focus on the business data versus looking only on IT data, how each use case is different from the other, and how using um, um, the anomaly detection system and analyzing that data in real time, we really find insights that help companies save millions of dollars. So that's it, um, and uh, I encourage you, we have a booth also outside uh, with the monitor. I found out that we are the only one that both monitor. So um, I encourage you to come and uh, see a, a demo and uh, uh, hear more about further use cases. And with Best Buy, it looks like pretty much uh, what's the uh, Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, any, uh, any questions? Okay, good. So I hope you liked it and uh, thank you for listening.